Hey, you guys. Just got back uh, from Arizona. Uh, been down there to a family gathering, little funeral celebration of life thing. And uh, on the way back, I always stop on the rim up by Flagstaff because they got these cool pine knots. And if you woodcarvers really want to torture yourself a little bit, I have been known to carve these darn pine knots, and they are harder than the hubs of heck. But uh, I'll show you. I only had one finished one here right at the moment, but we will show you some finished ones out of this pile. But um, what I really like about these pine knots is they've got all these cool shapes like down here where they're blowing this was the only one you guys that i had finished up uh to show you right now but just because this one has like a hat on and a pipe and this hat and the other there are so many characters uh involved in these pine knots um for instance i'll i'll set this one back down for a second but for instance uh here's one doesn't have any wood like where the hat might be or something but this is a perfect wizard see his look at that beard coming down there and a pointed hat of course i will usually either steel brush these or take a belt sander and just round them up whatever clean them up before i ever start carving now, I normally start them out with power, and I'll use a die grinder with a cut saw burr or something and rough this in. Well, then I'll go to my hand tools, and I'll take you guys through that in the film. But I just wanted to show you, I was excited. I just got back. Look here. You know, just like on a driftwood hunt, when I'm hunting for driftwood, uh, there's just so many things here look at this guy look at his hat man he's he got a big old brim of course i can cut it round make him a hat uh this one i really loved here he's got he's heavy though now what i'll do you guys some of these i will take a chainsaw and cut them in half where they'll hang on the wall like the finished one i just showed you and but now this guy's heavy, so you couldn't hang the whole thing on the wall. But look at the character. You can see that, you woodcarvers. Look at that, man. He's got a hat on, looking cool. Uh, you know, Kansas Tornado looks just like a tornado, a lot of them. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys, there's all kinds of shapes. Like, look at this. What I'll do is knock the rotten wood off, but I'll still have a lot of this weathered shape. I could even maybe go to this side. And uh, you'll see as I show you into this video a little further that they're hard, but they can be carved. And I have a lot of friends who, uh, who carve pine knots, uh, like Rich Weatherby out of uh, Colorado Springs. Rich carves tons of pine knots over the years. I don't know whether he still does, but I, I've seen him have piles of pine knots carved. And, uh, of course, like I said, you guys that really want to torture yourself, this is a good way because these things don't carve all that great. But look at the character of them, though. And, of course, you shape up what you want as you go. But, uh, nonetheless... We will be getting into a few pine knots on this video a little later. And I just wanted you guys to see. I was excited. I just got home from down on the rim by Flagstaff picking these things up. Like I had nothing better to be doing while we were camping, right? But uh, anyway, we're going to show you guys how to make something like this out of this pile of stuff.
what I'm doing, you guys, I could be down on the bandsaw, flattening the back on the bandsaw, but a lot of, and that's where they'll hang on the wall, because these are wall hangings, these pine knots, and I know a lot of guys that's carved pine knots going, why in the heck is he carving pine knots, man? That stuff's so hard. And it is. But let me tell you, I have sold every one of these guys I've ever carved. They're really good sellers. And uh, I got a couple more here I'm going to flatten the backs on. And then we're going to talk about some of them. So, well, these guys, <laughs> when I was picking them up, I kind of like them. They're, they're the brothers, you know. But the trouble is, these pine knots are so heavy. You could never probably, unless they were closer together or something, you could never hang this thing on the wall and make it look any good. So as much as I hate to, I am going to go ahead and cut them in two and flatten the backs of them. Uh, like I said, I would have loved to kept them together, but that ain't happening. So... I'll cut them apart and then I'll flatten. Now, oops. Let me just say this about these. When you guys are trying to figure out which which side to flatten off at the back. A lot of them, see how this one, I don't know whether you can see it, but it's got a crack down the middle on this side. But it doesn't, well, it's got a little one over here too. So here you'd have to pick the, the worst of two worlds, I guess. And it don't really matter on this one. I'll flatten off one side and I'll do what I do on the other side of it. Let's look at his brother here. See what he looks like. He... He's quite a character. I kind of like him already. Uh, and see, he's got a crack in this one side here. I guess he got a little here, too. I really like the character of this side. And that's what you have to do, you guys, when you're going through. And the reason, the other day you saw I had a whole pickup load of these things. Well, here's the reason why. I really like this guy. He was going to be a commander, a sea captain type of a guy. But at, when I saw the back flat, look at there. He's rotten in the middle. So his sea bearing days are in the stove. <laughs> so I am going to flatten these two brothers off. And I got a couple more little ones laying here. I'm going to flatten them off, and then here in a minute, we're going to talk about the, the character of some of these uh, guys. My character, this guy, uh, you know, you look at these character, you guys, and you say, this is old Mexican hat, you know, because his hat kind of looked like a Mexican sombrero or something. And, oh, this old boy here, he might be... Uh, Flatwater Sam or somebody like that. This might be Gold Panda. Well, this looks, his guys looks a little bit like the old character Yosemite Sam's beard and stuff here, see? And uh, this guy's got his own character. Flatwater Sam or Old Man Dan. And here we got... Uh, I already roughed this guy out, which I'm going to show you guys some rough out in a minute with a power tool. Guys, I tried a, a couple of different power burrs um, to see which one works the best. And I went to this heavier fluted carbide burr. And I'll tell you why. I had a, a thinner file type one in here for a while messing when i done this guy earlier and with that pine sap in there in the pine knots the darn thing loaded up real quick with uh pine pitch you know 
And so when I went to this one, and I also had it on a slower RPM, I had a variable speed die grinder. And I had it on a slower RPM, and it seemed to load up more. So I went to a faster RPM die grinder and a bigger fluted burr, and it didn't seem to load up as much. And I do have people all the time asking me, do you use much power? Well, it depends on the wood, but you know, I am a stone carver and almost all of the stone carving I do is with power. So yes, I do use power. And in this, I mean, these pine knots, we're only doing this uh, only because I come home with a whole load of them, like you saw. Plus, we were looking for something a little different to shoot here on Woodcarver's Corner. And uh, like I said before, if you guys want to torture yourself a little, get yourself some pine knots and play in the pine saw uh, for a while because you will smell really good after messing with these. Let's mess with this just a second. I'll kind of show you. I'm just getting rid of some of the nasty off no good wood. And I'm going to start roughing in. I normally would be wearing my respirator, but it's down where I'm carving on marble today. So anyway, this will do. You guys might notice that he's got a little whisk of hair coming right here. So that's why I'm leaving this one over here to kind of even out his hair. Now I'm pushing his forehead back and I'm going to start rubbing in an eye for a brow line for his eyes. And then I'm going to start rubbing in around his nose. Now, like I said, I'm just rubbing in with power. But I do plan on going back with hand tools and finishing these on in. Um, anyway, I'll work a little more here. Well, as you guys can see, it only take you five minutes or so with power to um, rough this in. But I can really go on in and uh, throw some character on in with, by hand tools now. Plus, I, you know, this is like cottonwood bark in one way, or driftwood even that it's usually hard and sun-baked and crusty on the outside, um, but it's a little softer and easier to carve once you get in there. This is part of it right here, you guys. 
we got to take a steel brush. Now, I have done this with a um, rotary wheel steel brush on a drill before. But it'll take a while on each one. Not only do I want to do the... Where I'm fixing to carve on these some more, but I just soon not have all this crap in my man cave in there where I'm going to carve later. Now this guy, I named him Windswept Willie. Got him roughed out. There's old Windswept. He's the old guy. And now I will clean these off a little better, you guys. Now, this guy, his hat made him look kind of off to the side. I named him Jean-Pierre. So, uh, he, he, that's, you know, what we're doing here, we're messing around with these pine knots, you guys. It's the character of the wood. We're letting the wood do the talking. Now, this guy, his hat, and his, everything about him, he took on the look of a safari guy, you know? Looked like a safari hat. So his name's uh, Safari Sam. And, of course, I'll, I'll take all these faces in by hand in there in the next evening or so in my man cave. And you can see I'm, I'm going to have to spend a lot of time a lot of times you guys see how this the knot kind of flared out into some hairy looking stuff well some with these pine knots you actually have to let the wood do the talking whatever it's saying and um this guy he just looked like gold pandan to me you know some old guy and uh Oh, this guy, he's pretty obvious. I named him Mexican Hat, which he just had a unique thing going on. Almost looked like a witch's hat in a way. But uh, anyway, I will spend time cleaning up, you know, to sell these in the gallery, like here. See, I got some loose stuff. I can't put that in the gallery like that, so I have to clean up some here and there and uh, of course this guy he was more of your wizard look from the beginning so he's obviously another merlin he should have been on our uh, wizard video so anyway guys i wanted you to see how i was flattening the backs of them with the chainsaw i'm roughing in the, the worst end with a uh die grinder with a burr and now i got me well i got seven of them here and i got three or four more over there where i was working 